gals, and this is Robert, Backyard Body Works. Uh, today, we are working on 2000 and, no, it's not 2000, it's a 1997 Honda Accord. As you can tell, I am a Honda guy. Um, and I've been having, it's been running a little rough lately and hesitating, and uh, <clears throat> I've been doing some troubleshooting as to why and I think that it is because of this little guy right back here, the throttle position sensor, because it hesitates when I step on the gas. I mean, I know that could be other things too, but um, I've done some troubleshooting with uh, of other systems and um, it's led me to believe that that's the, that's the issue. So uh, we're going to test it, and then if we need to replace it, we will replace it. So uh, follow along, and we will get started. All right, guys. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the... Uh, it looks like I'm looking at it now. Um, we're going to go ahead and start driving around. We're going to test it out and see how... Uh, I'm going to show you the hesitation. And... Uh, whether or not it uh, we can fix it so hmm that's strange so I'm doing it now of course you know you, anytime you take a car to the mechanic it never does what it's supposed to but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it'll do it while we're while we're running. So, uh, oh, let's see here. Now this car uh, was originally my son's car and he put it in a ditch. And so, uh, what I did was I bought it for him for like $200 because it was, it was pretty mangled in the front. Um, I had to replace the, uh, the front suspension and um, part of the uh, driver's side uh, drivetrain, uh, the CV joint or the CV uh, axle, and most of the, uh, the suspension on the driver's side because whatever he hit, he hit it hard and he says he wasn't going with 30 miles an hour. But uh, I know. <laughs> from my experience that to bend you know hardened steel like the suspension as far back as it was bent you got to be going a little bit faster than 35 miles an hour or maybe he just hit it just right and uh, and caught it at a caught it at a good uh, a good angle. pharmacy calling it's telling me my prescriptions already you know I am an old older guy so you know I've got all sorts of stuff going on anywho uh, so the car was uh, I, I, I had it this is before I broke my wrist and uh, the uh, I had to replace the hood the, um, the front uh, bumper and I had to have the frame actually pulled out because he had bent it down and uh, and to the left just a little bit. There it goes. Come on, it's hesitating. Come on, go, 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 go. There we go. Yeah, see that can be a real problem when you're uh, when you're trying to pull out somewhere and you step on the gas and that there is no, there is nothing. And it's not a compression issue, and it's not a power issue in the powertrain. Um, and you're like, well, gee, body man, how do you know that? You're just an auto body mechanic. Well, when you're a backyard mechanic like me, you have to be well versed in the entire system of the car um, because you never know what you're going to run into. And stuff like this happens all the time. You get a car that's whacked in the front or 
especially around the engine bay, and you run into so many different problems, you know, radiator problems, engine mount problems, you know, frame alignment problems, suspension problems, which is why I try to stay away from front end cars if they're, if they're, you know, if they're really bad. This one was pretty bad. This, this car actually should have been totaled. And, uh, and as a rebuilder, I would, <laughs> I would never really buy a 97, but it was my son's car and, you know, you, you take care of your kids. I mean, it's, you know, I've, I've kept it, I've kept the car, you know, basically to, uh, to see if he would, uh, need it in the future. So, uh. I drive it back and forth to work because uh, as you guys know I do work the night shift and uh, so and it's been pretty reliable I've had, I've had it for about a year now and this problem has been plaguing me for the last nine months ten months that I'll press the gas and it'll just it'll 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 just want to die and um, I, I pretty much figured out that it's the uh, the throttle positioning sensor that's giving us the trouble. Uh, how do you know that, you ask? Well, I will tell you. Um, it's a simple matter of deductive reasoning. You just, you know, you unplug different systems that you know control certain things. And when the car, you know, does fine, oh, Hmm. That system must be what's controlling the problem. Now, come on. Come on. There we go. Come on. Come on. You can do it. I don't know if you guys can hear that. There, there there's the engine revving. But it's uh I thought it was a fuel issue at first. I thought, you know, maybe we're somewhere, you know, it's uh, cuz you know, the hesitation, you know, the map sensor, you know, I'm getting a map sensor code. And for those of you who don't know what map sensor, that's your, um, your, uh, what do you call it? Gosh. See, this is all early, early onset Alzheimer's. Um, the, uh, the map sensor is what can, tells the car, you know, the air pressure inside the throttle body. Um, Of course, I wonder what MAP, I can't remember for the life of me what MAP stands for, but it's a, it's a, it's a vacuum, it's a vacuum sensor, and it basically measures the, the barometric pressure inside the throttle body, you know, whether it's high pressure, low pressure, blah, 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 blah. So, um, I replaced it, didn't change it, and that was, that's, you know, MAP sensor is pretty expensive. Come on. The map sensor is a pretty expensive piece of equipment. And, uh, come on. And so, you know, you're talking 70, 70, 80 bucks. And it wasn't the problem because I didn't, I, you know, I was in a hurry and, you know, oh yeah, that's got to be it. And so, uh, no, it wasn't it. So I sat down with my uh, my uh, shop manual and I went through the electrical system and I tested certain things and everything tested good. I mean I was getting good uh, you know voltage on you know all the sensors except for the uh, throttle position sensor. And I was like hmm. So I unplugged it and drove it around and sure enough car drove fine. In fact, it drove great. So I was like, you know, that was a $70 mistake. So I'm on the way to uh, Advanced Auto to get a throttle positioning sensor for this car, and then we'll put it in. So guys, stick with us, and uh, we'll get to the store in just a minute. All right, guys. So they don't have the part in stock. They have to order it. It should be here at 5.30. Unfortunately, I will not be here to uh, to go get it because I've got to uh, 
I've got stuff to do tonight. Uh, I gotta go pick up a drill. My wife does auctions, and so uh, she likes to do that proxybid.com. And she found a, a drill that she wants. And so we're gonna go pick that up tonight. All right, guys. I was gonna show you how I troubleshooted the uh, the car since we're just around the corner from the advanced auto store. Ooh, that's hot. We are. I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to unplug that little little guy right back there, and I'm gonna show you how different, how much differently the car runs without it plugged in. neighborhood friendly advanced auto parts store. You guys strapped in? I can just barely see you over the steering wheel there. Let's uh, yeah, I can already tell the difference.
questions because I'll be glad to answer them. And if I don't know the answer, I'll find the answer. I mean, I've got enough enough books and material laying around that you know I should be able to do that. So take care, and we'll see you guys on the flip side. Keep it shiny.